All right, it is early October 1862. <clears throat> I'll just go through a few things here. I see he's building a depot here, so I know he can draw supply from the next region over, so him building the depot here makes me think he's either going to go south or try to hit me here um, instead of just sitting there, so need to keep an eye on that. <clears throat> I see here um, he... I'm taking a risk here because I'm going to go ahead and attack Mora. Um, and I've got my my um, <clears throat> troops set to enter the structure once you reach the destination. So I'm hoping that I can take it because it looks like all he got, all he has here is this um, little mounted militia here, um, which is, I mean, I could I could beat him easy with this uh, small division I have here. But, and hopefully he'll enter the structure because I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to fall back. If not, that's fine. I'll take the structure, um, get my troops in there and consolidate it, and then I'll have to deal with him. He can, only, he can either, either go north or south. If he, get, if he goes south, <clears throat> I think that's too risky for him. Um, but then again, he's, he's, he's a risk taker. So he could try to take this and wipe it out, or he could try to go around. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. If he goes around, I'm just going to consolidate here, leave like a, a regiment or two in the city, and then move my guys south to link up with him. Um, and I may have to build a brigade down here just to hold these cities in case he tries to take it. We'll see. Um, but my bet is, if I was in his shoes, I'd move south. Now... I'm going to be there in seven days, so I think it's going to take him longer to get there. Um, hopefully I can get inside the structure and I'll make it a good fight or at least to where he can't get to it. And I, I, I think if I can survive getting in here a turn, then I should be fine because he's going to run low on supply. Um, I do have a wagon with me, so I don't have to worry too much about my unit just surrendering outright. Um, and hopefully that'll be the end of the fighting out far, far west. Because um, if I do take this area and he retreats north, you know, I, I don't see him getting around me down here. Um, so that's that. Uh, Arkansas. <coughs> Excuse me. Arkansas, Missouri. I'm still just kind of burning some of these towns and forts out here. Um, I already see snow here, so I think next turn I'm going to try to pull a division back, move them east. Um, nothing, there was one bow this turn, it was in Virginia, it wasn't a huge one. Um, I see he kind of moved this unit over here, not sure what he's doing, he's probably going to come over here. I've decided to pull, um, Walker out of here. I don't plan on building any more Missouri troops. Um, this game... I think most of my stuff's going to go into the replacement chits now, um, and I have plenty of other states with brigades I can I can form, and I just I just don't feel feel like it's strategic to hold this anymore. So I'm moving him out. I'm going to join or put him right here. Um, just kind of evaluate my evaluate my situation. Um, I'm not sure he may try to kind of pull something over here. I think that may be what he tries to do next turn is pull this unit here, rebuild the rail, and then start trying to funnel troops this way, and then I'd have to pull back. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, it looks like he didn't build a depot. He does have a, he has a wagon. I'm not sure. I mean, he could just keep trading out wagons, I guess. Um, he's got these irregulars and whatnot, just trying to you know, cut rail lines, but as I said, I'm not sure if he knows this, but I'm, I don't really need this right now. I don't plan on reinforcing one side or the other. I expected to lose this. In fact, I expected to almost probably have it lost by now. So, you know, if he takes it, that's fine. Um, I'm going to move kind of down to, you know, Jackson, Vicksburg, and down here, kind of set up a defensive line down here, and it'll probably take him another it'll, it'll take him a good while to get down here you know if he tries to come down here you know he has to come through the rail lines or it's difficult to get down here in a turn or so so i got enough cavalry i feel confident that i can kind of keep him busy to where he wouldn't wouldn't get down there for a while um i built my 
depot here. Um, he's got a some irregulars here to try to cut the lines. I don't know. He may try to destroy the depot too. Um, I got a cavalry, huge cavalry um, division just moving in. Should should wipe them out of there. <coughs> I kind of consolidated these troops. Um, I got one fairly decent division here, um, and just kind of a smaller nothing um, there as well. So. I don't feel like he can, he can send any kind of force in here in one turn to get me. I can pull back. Um, he may try to swing around again. It's going to it's going to start snowing here soon. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I'm probably going to. He's got Grant, Virginia, <coughs> and seeing the way things are now, I may be pulling another division out of here, moving them to Virginia. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Not much happened in Virginia this turn except for movement. Um, there was another battle with the stone guy here. Let me bring it up for you. Um, of course I won it. Um, I had my large cavalry force move in there and he just, he lost a lot more men. He's looks like he's down to maybe about 900 men. Very low cohesion. Um, I've put him to just follow him like just stay on him until it destroys him the only downside to that <coughs> excuse me like a lot of times you can just move your unit into the region and it'll fight them if it's in there if you attach it to somebody like it will follow them wherever they go the only downside to this is he could he could potentially get back to um washington here just kind of green green evade combat and then my cav unit would just go right into Washington with um, actually we'll see if he could even make it up there all right I'm not worried about that so yeah um, I'm just gonna put him to follow him hopefully he just destroys the unit outright <clears throat> um, there was an event this turn oh I did get uh, an elite Louisiana regiment, um, the Tigers Brigade. I'm moving them up to Virginia. I got uh, Jubal Early. Um, he's a pretty good commander. I have him in Richmond right now, um, commanding the division I have. He's a, it says 212, but he's a 433, I think. Um, and he'll show up next turn. He's a fast mover. Um, However, Lee's lost order. This is an event that happened. Um, makes me kind of nervous because what it says is USA has no fog of war in the mid-Atlantic. So that means I'm not sure what all he can see, but I'm assuming he can just see everything here. So he probably sees that I'm exposed here. Um, I'm not sure if you can see what I've got in Richmond. Um, so that makes me a little bit nervous. Um, I did get my little fleet here. I'm just going to attack next turn. You know, I have a, I'm not even sure if he'll notice it's here. Um, maybe he will, maybe he won't. Um, but I'm going to attack. Um, I'll probably hit, get hit by a grant from the land there, but I'm not going to return fire for that. I'm hoping I can just take out this unit. Um, he got Grant down here. He got Kearney back over here. I was a little bit surprised he didn't just go back to Harper's Ferry because, you know, again, he plays aggressive. Um, sometimes chaotic, in my opinion, but he's aggressive, so I figured he may try to do that. I was willing to give it up, but I didn't think he'd be able to get here in one turn either from over here, but he, he did. Um, I guess he moved from here to here, got back on the rail line, just moved over <clears throat> so he's he's got a really good force here I know he's got Whipple's core in there too which was beat up pretty badly but if he, he's got the money and the uh, volunteers to replace it so my guess is here you know adding up him and Kearney right now he's got about 5500 force um, and I have about the same about the same here um, now with full cohesion I'll have a lot more plus I'm replacing people too but at the end of the day I think he's got a few more men than me at the moment um, probably more than just a few so 
<clears throat> in a way, that's fine. I'm, I'm not sure if he's going to try to attack next turn, come over to Alexandria again. Um, again, he didn't attack Alexandria, so I think he's kind of feeling the pressure right now. Um, I am railing Long Street back over here, take one turn to get there. Um, I can't risk him coming over here. I've also got Jackson coming down here. Um, he'll probably come down here, wait a turn or two, regain cohesion. I put one of Jackson's divisions in with uh, Smith here. Um, and Smith, these guys are still beat up. Um, really low on cohesion. Um, I don't know why it does that. Um... So, you know, if he was to move over with Grant and Kearney, he'd, he'd probably push me out. Um, but again, I can't risk can't risk him getting over here to Alexandria and my core just being separated. So, Longstreet should get here in one turn. Jackson should get there in seven turns, and at least they'll all be linked. Um, he may push Smith out. That's fine. I hope not, but he may. Um, this fort's still kind of under siege. Um, my hope is that he just does nothing this turn. Um, my guys can consolidate. If so, I'll probably add another <clears throat> division to Longstreet, leave him here. I'll probably put my best defensive commanders here and then push Jackson back across the river. Um, probably take this fort. That's my hope for the moment. I did detach, uh, Yule for the moment. Um, he's... He's got a beat up division, so I'm just pulling him out. Um, probably rail him down to Richmond, or may just sit him here in Manassas. Um, let him regain men and cohesion, then I'll put him back into the fight. There's just no point in putting him in there. If you, if you see by himself, he's like a power of 63. He's not going to be effective, so just pull him out um, and let him regain cohesion and men. Um. That being said, I put most of everything back into my chits. I am building one artillery piece. Um, uh, I, I mean, I have 508 um, for money. I, I was toying with the idea because I do have the option to um, declare a mobilization again. It only gets me 200 conscripts. I think in January I can declare full mobilization which if I do partial now and then full then, I think that'll just be too many. I'll have too many conscripts and not enough money. Um, so I'm just going to wait for to where I can declare full mobilization and just do that. Plus this costs morale. Full is going to cost more. I think it's like four or um, five morale. You get more conscripts. So um, doing the rail pool again. Um, and of course in January, I'll be able to do bonds and taxes. Um, other than that, nothing. I did do two more militia units in uh, um, Richmond just to triple make sure I have somebody for Richard um, Taylor to train up. I do have some more volunteer units coming in right here. Um, should be there in 10 days. And then I have... Uh, forest division here coming in so I'm, I'm pretty safe on that but just to be safe I didn't want them want them to be there a turn without anything to to uh, to train up although now I think about it I did form that division with Jubal early and he's got a couple of volunteers in there so you know what I'm gonna delete those militia units um, and put it into my chits um, I'm gonna go ahead and send this over, and we'll see how the see how the turn runs. Thanks. All right, what's up, guys? 62 early October. Not a whole lot of battles going on this turn, but um, definitely some positioning that uh, happened last turn. So he's got Jackson up here on this fort again, besieging it, but he's split in two. So he's got Jackson up here with basically two core. As you can see there. Uh, and then he's got Longstreet down here with a corp. So I could do a couple different things. I could attack Jackson. Which is tempting, right? I can bleed him some more. 
Or what I can do is I can get back down here, down here to Alexandria, put myself in the middle of him. I, you know, I doubt he's going to keep keep Jackson up here, right? He's going to do uh, one of two things. He's going to move Smith back here, so he at least has support to Jackson, <clears throat> and then he can also support Longstreet. Uh, or he's going to keep besieging this, maybe move Jackson or uh, Longstreet up to Leesburg. But regardless, uh, if I can get across back across this river here, I'll put myself in a situation next turn where I can attack him again. Because I do want to keep attacking. I want to keep bleeding him as best I can. Particularly since he's not really dug in, right? He's not dug in here. He's not dug in down there. Um, I kept going back and forth. I kind of wanted to attack Jackson because I got a pretty good force now. I've got Grant running things. And he's got five divisions at the moment under him. On top of that, I've got Hamilton, who's got four divisions. And then I've also got Kearney, who had four divisions, but I just pulled uh, Joseph Hooker out to go down and connect him with, with Grant. So I've got a pretty big force now, larger than he perhaps realizes. But I'm going to position myself in Alexandria and then either attack Jackson up at the fort from D.C. or... Uh, attack Longstreet from Alexandria next turn, probably. So, so that's what I'm going to do there. Um, we'll see what he does. I don't know if he's going to keep Jackson there or not. He's got a 35% chance of uh, breaching the walls, but I've also got that supply wagon and everything there in a pretty, you know, full division. So, Otherwise, I've got a good amount of reinforcements still coming. I've got you know these guys here. So I'm going to move them down onto McClellan and get them upgraded. I've got another one over here that I'm going to move over to uh, Seigel, Seigel and get them upgraded. So we're doing pretty well on the reinforcements. Um, definitely a lot more troops coming to the field. Now this guy here, he didn't get out of there like I wanted. Uh, so I've got him on green, green, evade combat. I'm really trying to get him down here, get him out of there. He, you know, he still has troops, but his uh, supply is really low. I, I basically kept him down here in, in Virginia longer than I should have. And now I'm in a bit of a situation trying to get him out uh, let's go over the events real quick first all black regiment in the United States history during the Civil War the uh, Union used more than 24,000 blacks from Louisiana just from Louisiana alone it's impressive who joined the US the Union Army approximately 180,000 African Americans served during the Civil War all right, we went with the Emancipation Proclamation, right? So that cost us victory points, but I'm not going for victory points this game. I'm going for complete victory, taking both Richmond and Atlanta. Uh, but we got a whole bunch of conscripts, and I think that triggers every year. As you can see, our conscripts are back up to 1,000. Our money's down. We're not going to raise taxes, even though we do get 1% negative on the price inflation. Cost us two morale. Our morale's doing pretty well at 93, so we're not going to mess with that this time, <laughs> like we did last time. All right, Brigadier Mitchell's on the map. Uh, he's a c cavalry guy. So I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cavalry unit here, take this guy, give him the artillery over to uh, Mitchell, and I'm going to build out Mitchell and try and make him into a cavalry division to better support. Because, like, right here, I you know, I've got all, this, all, the, all these forces right here in Nashville, but I can't see what he has here in Rutherford. Um, even though he's got McCulloch down here with one stars, which probably means he's bringing up a, a two star at some point. I'd like to attack him or even go down here and attack McCulloch. But since I don't know what he has here, I, I, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable moving Gilbert out of here. So that's what we have for uh, that army. Uh, we got McPherson. Which, you know, his stats always surprise me because I feel like he was a much better, obviously, commander than a 3-1-1. But, you know, he's a he's a he's on the verge of being a two-star. And he has the reduce siege time, right, for forts. So, whatever. Uh, and then uh, Governor Warren, uh, we got him. And I gave him a command right away. He's got, I think, a four defense. Something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think he's got like a four defense. He's a fantastic commander. He's got 
Defensive Engineer, so he's great for defense. He's got the plus one command point, additional uh, per, per level, per ability. Stacks to all elements in the, you know, in the stack. So, you know, if you're hurting for a command point, you stick him in there and that, that takes care of that. And then, um, as, as you can see, he's got an elite regiment in, in his command. All right, the Stanners Brigade, or Sanners. Now, they're way up here, and I actually did not move them, so good thing. So they're uh, obviously another elite brigade. And I actually have a division that needs them. Let's see, where you at? This guy right here, Leno. Or Reno, rather, needs him. So we'll send him to DC. So that's why it's important to read the notes, too, because sometimes you miss these, uh, these, these prompts or these new units that hit, that hit the field. Also, one note, um, you, you oftentimes don't want to move your units on green-green, just in case they get attacked. At least if they're blue-green, they'll uh, flee combat. If they're green-green, they may get, may get hit pretty hard. Now, the reason it's taking 20 days at the moment is this rail line's cut by this guy. So I'm trying to fix the rail line, and then move back, move down here to, to fix this rail line. Uh, but it's, it's causing a little bit of a delay for my troops, but nothing significant. All right, so that's that. Let's go over the battles. Um here yes, we'll rally around the flag for all right nelson uh virginia this is where i lost 276 he lost 92 uh he's got a pretty robust uh, cavalry unit there and then uh this is over against the indians and uh we won that so i'm just trying to get rid of them because they're annoying and i don't need them besieging my fort uh, and then i'll move back down here now one interesting thing over here in the far west so I'm building an outpost, right? We've got about the same amount of forces here. But over here, up near uh, Santa Fe, he's got this guy coming out out of nowhere, it seems, with a supply wagon. So I don't know if he's bringing him down to combine with this guy here, this 223, uh, or if he's trying to get around me. It's far more important for me to hold this stockade than is this advanced position here. So I'm just going to pull back for now. I don't really care if he takes this, this area. What I really care about is this, this stockade because it's a supply and a defensive position for me. So I'm going to pull back there, and then uh, you know I can always pull push forward uh, in the meantime, uh, later on. Okay. All right, let's see here. Uh, let's do... Okay, we got... 108 money this turn from our supply or from our supply ships our shipping lanes our naval patrols failed to engage the enemy Memphis squadron man we missed him all right so I was hoping when he came through here with his ships he must have moved his ships out of here that we'd engage him we didn't so that didn't happen our cohesion is really low so I'm gonna actually dock for, for a turn and get them in there. But that's really annoying that I didn't take out his ships. We took Hampton Roads just with some sailors. I just want to get military control on that. Open up a, a second front, potentially. Uh, for 63. Alright, now we got these Indians up here. Really freaking annoying. They've taken that. Um, that's this guy up here and here. So I need to deal with that at some point, and I think I'm going to deal with it with my cavalry down here. So um, he's got artillery. What I'll probably do is I will take him after he takes this place. Probably take him up north and uh, deal with the Indians. And then uh, consolidate and make this guy my primary cavalry commander down in the Western Theater. Alright, we're going to read the events. Okay, so that's everything going on there. Let's run the turn, see what happens. 
Mississippi, Georgia, and Florida, all raised on high the bonnie blue flag that bears a single star. So now, as you can see, I'm building a redoubt there in Nashville, and then I almost have all my artillery here in Paducah to start building that redoubt as well. Okay, so he moved on Alexandria, which I thought was a possibility, right? Move uh, Long Street forward to try and support Jackson. I was comfortable with that because I had a rail line. So actually, he's got 7,000. So he moved everybody into Alexandria. Um, I should be on the defensive, honestly, because I was able to rail in, which took one day. So, but again, this is working out because I wanted battles, right? So he uh, vacated the fort up there west of... DC, north of Alexandria. I have two core in the region here, or yeah, effectively the total, a total of two core in Alexandria, but they're all under grant. And then I have two more core in DC, which should be coming up to support here. Although right now it's just Grant and Longstreet. It's not the rest of my entire army or his for that matter. But this is why I brought Grant over here. I wanted this, I, I wanted this little extra advantage of leadership. And it's a little bit of a risk, right, to have him uh, leading the stack. You always run the risk of uh, your army commander getting injured or killed, as you saw with Lee earlier in this game. But um, yeah, anyway, it's, it's a risk you take, right, because you just can't have Grant on ice. Um, the whole reason that you have him on the Union and putting him where all the fighting is. There we go. 93,000 to 90. So we're about even now in terms of numbers. Total force. His army in Northern Virginia is about 90,000. Mine's about 93, 94,000. Which is, you know, good. It's impressive, actually, considering where we were at just a few months ago in terms of uh, numbers. You know, he had about a 30,000 numerical advantage, I believe. And I have probably a full another division that I could bring down to D.C. if I needed to, but I'm going to get them trained up. Get those conscripts trained up to line infantry. Man, it's a long battle. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is day one, too, so that means, like, I got there. I, I don't know. I, I'm surprised he was able to get there so quickly. The fact that, that Jackson was able to move from the fort down to Alexandria in one day, and then Longstreet. I mean, it kind of makes sense. You can go from Manassas to Alexandria in about a day. Fine. But I railed in there, so I, I should have been there before he was. So hopefully... Uh, I'm on the defensive, although I don't think I am because I'm on the left there. I went in on orange, orange, too, by the way. I didn't go in on red, red. Just in case something like this happened. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Alexandria, I went in blue, blue, orange. Hoping I could get there first and then uh, get the defensive advantage. Man, that's quite the battle. I say I probably lost about 13,000 at this point. Maybe a little bit more in this battle. He's probably lost he's down to 80, maybe 20,000. He's definitely losing more troops than we are. And, and I think a lot of that just has to do with over the last four or five months we've gotten considerably better squadron com uh, division commanders um, so that's helped enormously and now we have Grant leading things as opposed to um, you know McDowell so alright so we won hell yeah he lost look at that I was pretty good pretty good on the number there about 24,000 I lost almost 15,000 so I'll take that any day of the week Especially as a union, right? That was a long battle. So three rounds. Uh, we might as well just go through it here. Okay, so I think we were the attacker, probably. Okay, so we didn't have a river crossing penalty. If we had, that could have ended up a lot worse, right? So... No river crossing penalty. Uh, 
Um, oh, interesting. He's got an artillery division. Good for him. Where, uh, by the way, um, I am building out my military now over the winter to do that. Uh, I'm starting to build a lot of light artillery units that I then can use as basically to replace loose artillery, and then pull that artillery out and make division uh, artillery divisions. I'm gonna start doing that. Um, okay, so let's just go round by round here, just really quick. All right, so I inflicted 323 to two, and I had basically Grant that stack. So we had four or five divisions. So that really helped me because from the get-go, right? He had three divisions against my five, right? So yeah, I had five divisions going at him. Um, Sedwick didn't perform the best. He showed some cowardice, and so did uh, Augur, which is kind of odd because he's got this uh, bonus to morale to his troops and uh, cohesion. There's that. So that, that was just that, that one stack. And then it looks like... Maybe everybody showed up. Yeah, because now he's got Jackson and maybe Smith. Yeah, there's, there's Kirby Smith with uh, Stuart. Kirby Smith's a division commander, though. Okay. He actually was exhausted. A lot of 3 one ones, surprisingly. Whereas I'm just, I'm stacked. Right, like all my division division commanders are, are a bunch of badasses. Um, so this is a closer uh, round two, and then round three, we just absolutely schlacked them. This was when everybody was there. Grant, um, yeah, I don't even know if everybody showed up for that. I might only had two of my 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 core engaged. But uh, needless to say, it was uh, 98,000 to 101,000. So we actually had more troops than we did. Although I, d I don't think all my corps are engaged. Uh, and then uh, he lost 24,000, lost 15. Nice. Okay. Yeah, it's just a little tiny battle. I just want to take care of that because it's in my rear. Just clean, clean it up. Um. Oh, interesting. He's attacking my fleet with his fleet. He's trying to keep me from crossing, I think. That's funny. Okay. Okay, so now Jackson's attacking me. All right. Although what's annoying is why is he attacking me? Why am I not defending? So he's still got Smith sitting on that fort. So he does want to try and take that fort. I think his plan was to take Alexandria... Connect it up with that fort up there, and then try and keep the pressure on DC. So we won that one. So yeah, we were on the de defense. We got the river crossing penalty, so we did get there before he did. This is working out well, so far. So far, right? So we pushed Jackson back across. He's split in half. So now we can go after either him or Longstreet. And uh, they won't be able to support each other. At least initially, right? Um, takes about four days to attack the fort. So he could always bring Jack uh, Longstreet up to Leesburg there to connect and support Jackson. But we really tore him up there. So, hey, we got, uh, hey, look, we got him out of there. So that's good. Um, get him on, on the ship. Why can he not reach? That's weird. Anyways, okay, so we got a huge morale swing from that. We got 10. Wow. Okay. So what's his at then? He's still got 115, so it's like whatever. But uh, that, was, that was a huge morale swing for us. We got nine from that first battle in Alexandria. Oh, that's, that's why. <clears throat> so we don't have Alexandria. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Oh, so that guy, I was trying to get him across to Grant. 
He got stuffed. Okay, so let me go about you know doing the, the movements as we usually do. And then I'll come back here and update you on what the plan is. 